Good afternoon, and welcome to Mid-Monday Ministry Moments with Marie. I pray you had a wonderful week. Some of us have been shopping for grandchildren and spouses and friends. We've been in celebrations with, with our families and with church members and places that you work where you work. It has been wonderful. And now we're on the cusp of the day of celebration that is set aside for the whole wide world to not only give gifts to one another, but to celebrate the gift that was given to humanity. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the time that we have together as a family of believers, for those who want to know more about you, that we can come and share a word and to get inspiration, knowing how to love you, how to serve you, how to appreciate each other, how to live in this world, how to be a good neighbor. Father, we are so, so grateful. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Lord, you're my strength and you're my savior. Um, please like and share um, this live. Um, the like and, and empowers me and it encourages me and to share um, the word of God is always a good thing. Now, because of the season that we're in and because it's not going to be too much longer that we will be opening gifts. Today, we're going to talk about the gift. Amen? Amen. This little piece of hair. Amen. And that's what's entitled, the gift. And I'm using James 1, 17, the A portion of it, where it says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. So we're going we're gonna to dissect this gift. Amen? Tis the season of giving. Mm -hmm. That's what gifts are. They're, they, they're something that you, something tangible that you give to someone um, to make their hearts uh, merry. We celebrate birthdays and we celebrate when people graduate and anniversaries and sometimes we just give good gifts just because just because we love you so most gifts are wrapped with paper and it depicts the occasion in which it is given the content within is something exceptionally desired when we give gifts, it is a good thing to know what people like, what makes them happy, what their favorite color is, because there is such an expectation when someone is given a gift. Merry making of songs and dance express the joy not only of the anticipation of the gift and opening it, but the revelation. Because once it's open, then it's revealed to us. Those who gather witness the delight and joy in the celebration, especially when you have children and, and we all come and we watch them open their gifts with such delight. I do miss that. Um, all the children now are grown. Even my great-grandchildren are almost grown. Amen. But when we do come together and we give gifts, if it's nothing but the gift of laughter and conversation and hugging and kissing, there is such an anticipation and revelation to know that I still love you. You still love me. I am so happy to see you. The somber moments of marvel of this it's stilled in our hearts that we rejoice. And sometimes long after the day is gone, that memory is there and you can still feast in an enjoyment. Just as we celebrate Christmas in the natural, this tis the season that in the fullness of time, God sent his forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, 
that we can celebrate him, not just one day, but 365 days a year, all day long. Amen. Morning, noon, and night. He is the gift that comes to redeem us. He came to redeem us that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And that's found in Galatians 4, 4 and 5, King James Version. And we celebrate. And even though we weren't born, yes, he looked down through humanity and he saw us because we were all under the law. We were all condemned. Amen. But the gift came. Ooh. So let's talk about the gift, the gift of Christ, the gift that God gave to us. First of all, like we wrap gifts for the tree, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Just like we put the gifts under the tree, he was laid in a manger. And then there went out an RSVP to the shepherds, and the angels went and gave them an in, a special invitation. Amen? Because at that time, the shepherds were probably the lowest on the totem pole. But he didn't just come for the rich man or for those um, who were the Jews. He came for everyone. So the angels stopped by and gave them a special invitation. They announced his birth. They were proclaiming good tidings of great joy. Why? Because the good shepherd is here. Amen. So the Bible says that there was a location and a time. So when we send out invitations, we always say where the location is and what time it is. Mm -hmm. Well, the time had been fulfilled. The location of where the good shepherd is, the gift, the baby, the one wrapped in swaddling clothes. He is going to be in the city of David. He, he is the Savior. He is Christ the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then it said a multitude of heavenly hosts began singing and praising God. I know at a birthday celebration. We always sing to the person who is the birthday person. We sing happy birthday to you or whatever rendition. Well, they sang about the gift because this was going to be his birthday. Now, we, we don't know if it was actually the 25th of December. But what he did because he is the gift to humanity we can sing to him every day. Amen. They found this gift, just like the invitation said, laying in a manger. And the publishment, the wonderment of the gift um, was proclaimed. You know, when a baby is born, we all, you know, we put it out there. Oh, you know, they had a a nine-pound bouncing baby, and he or she was 21 inches long with a full head of hair. Well, the shepherds published this. Yes, they went and told about this baby. Amen? And the celebration had begun of glory, honor, and praise. And this set the tone for what we are to do. Amen? And not only if you keep reading, it even talks about how they brought gifts to, to the child, those wise men. Amen. So not only was a gift given to us, but we have a gift to give to him. And that's our hearts. Amen. So let's look at this gift. The gift was wrapped in flesh mm -hmm, because he was fully man and fully God. The gift was also wrapped in righteousness. It was wrapped in love, peace, and joy. He was the high priest, ruler of the universe, a sweet savior. And isn't it amazing, this babe 
um, this was all who he was and more. When we have children, we look at them and we say, oh, we had a baby boy and, you know, he's got strong arms in his, and, and he's got a strong grip and he's, he's going to be a president or he's going to be an attorney or he's going to be a judge. When we have um, daughters, we look at them and they're beautiful with beautiful hair and, you know, you look at their little hands and how cute and delicate and feminine they are. And we're going to say, but she is going to be a CEO. She's going to be a professor at a college. She's going to be a scientist. Well, that's what was being said about Jesus. Amen. This is all of who he was. Even though he came as a babe, he was fully man and fully God. He, Jesus, was dressed not only in the swaddling clothes, but he was dressed in the Holy Ghost with the reflection of his father. When we have children, they look like somebody in the family. At least they should look like somebody in the family. Either the mother, the father, the grandmother, the grandfather, Aunt Sookie, Uncle John, somebody, there needs to be a reflection. And that babe was the reflection of his father. He was undoubtedly God's golden child. Amen. The only begotten of the father who was well pleased with his son. Yee! Philippians 2 and 9 states it like this. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, mm -hmm, every knee, don't get it twisted, should bow and will bow, and of things in the heaven and things in earth, and things that are even under the earth, and that every tongue should confess who Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. That's the King James Version. So when Jesus got older, he himself proclaimed where it was written later on in Hebrews 10 and 7. And this is what he said about himself. I love this scripture because sometimes we want to be all that in a bag of chips. We want everybody to know all the degrees we have, where we've been, where we've traveled. You know, we've been among, we've been put among kings and queens. And the Bible tells us that God will elevate us. But, but we can't get lifted in pride. But I love this scripture in Hebrews 10 and 7 because this is what Jesus said. He said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, them 66 chapters. It is written of me to do the will, O God, King James Version. So in other words, I'm not puffing myself up, but I'm just letting you know, the book really hasn't even been completely written yet. There's some scrolls that has been, you know, signed off on. But I'm letting you know when the book is written, it's all about me. Amen. Then Jesus established the second covenant. Because remember last week we talked about he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled that first covenant in love. Amen. So then he establishes a second covenant. He just didn't come and move mountains and, 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 and swim channels and did all these miraculous things, but he established something. Then he left it on record for us. Amen. Because it was because of us that so love that he even came. So he establishes this second covenant in the ninth verse of Hebrew. Jesus is talking about his father, 
when we go to Matthew 7 and 11. He said, if ye then, mm -hmm, being evil. Now he's getting ready to tell you about gifts. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to tell you how his father gives gifts. He said, if then, being evil, know how to give good gifts. And we do. When, when our children say, you know, we, we want that gift to take that costs two, three, four hundred dollars, we find a way to get it. Amen. Because that's a good gift for them. It says, when you give good, give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask for it? What did he say? How much more shall your father? So when you are attached to me, when, when you are in me and I am in you, then my father is your father. And the Bible says that if you ask anything in his will, if you walk up right before him, he will withhold no good thing, no good thing. And sometimes everything that we ask is not always good. Some things that our children would ask, um, it was not always good for them. Wasn't good for our pocketbooks either, amen. But he says, when you're attached to me, then my father is your father. Proverbs 18 and um, 16 says it this way. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So when you're attached to me, it's unlimited. The Lord will bless you according to your personality, to your abilities. Look at the disciples. When it came time for the word to actually go to the Gentiles, to go into some places that the um, Peter and them were skeptical about doing. He called in Paul, amen, and he took them before great people, great kings. It was it Agrippa that said when Paul got finished testifying to him, he said, you almost convinced me. Amen. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to be um, envious of each other's gifts because the gift of, of salvation is across the board. And then he takes us individually. We're not robots, but he takes us individually and he magnifies and personifies that gift. Amen. And look at what those 12 men did. They turned the world upside down by the gifts that were given to them by the Father. So, unwrapping this gift. Let's unwrap the gift of Christ that was given to us. Because if you look at the word gift, it can represent grace I that was infused how was grace infused by the blood of Jesus Christ then there's the F which is faith now we come and see the gift is it's it's two parts to the gift that will make one so this part is us faith we have to have the faith to believe and this faith will take us to the letter T. It transforms. So the gift is grace infused by the blood and faith that transforms. Amen? So let's look at this gift. The gift is the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is compartmentalized and stacked. But one, uh-huh, Love. Let's look at the one. This gift is compartmentalized and it's stacked, but it's one. It is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, 
meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So everybody gets that gift. You know, when you have a party or or um, an anniversary celebration or a wedding, we usually get favors. And everybody gets the same favor. Yeah. So this gift, everybody gets this gift. Amen. And it is one. And everybody gets it. Amen. Then the gift is to walk in the spirit. When you get Christ, the gift, then you can walk in the spirit. Then we don't satisfy the desires of the flesh. The gift is the promise of eternal life. All of us who live holy, we will get the gift of eternal life. Because he has no respect to person. The gift is the abundance of life. He said, I came that you may have life and it more abundant. So what is the abundance of life? It's not just things, but it's that peace. It's that long suffering. It's that temperance. There is nothing better than peace. When you have peace with your spouse, peace with your enemies, peace in your home, you can walk among um, disruption and, and, and turmoil, but you're inside, you've got peace. You've got a song in your heart. You can withstand storms. Why? Because you got peace. You have love. Mm -hmm. The gift is freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from sin. Where sin had us at one time bound, sin had us walking in darkness, well, he gave the gift of freedom. Amen? Mm. I love how he, these gifts that were given to us, X's out what Satan tries to do. And what does he try to do? He tries to capture us and destroy us. That's what he tries to do. But the gift came to exit out. We have the gift of liberty. And not liberty that we should be flaunting our stuff. Or we think we're better than somebody. But the liberty that Christ gives us. Is the liberty to be go boldly before the throne. He hears our prayers. We can pray in him. We can ask in his will. And he hears and delivers. We have the liberty of worship. We have the liberty of telling someone else about the goodness of the gift. Amen. We have the gift of righteousness. We, there was nothing about us right when we were in sin. But when he washed us with his blood, we put on the cape of righteousness. So when the father looks at us, we are in right standing with him. We're no longer his enemy. And he can, he, now we can have a relationship with the Father, with the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The gift of transformation of our minds and hearts and body. Before God saved us, our thoughts were terrible. We may not have always acted on them, but they were terrible. We would sit and talk about how we're going to take somebody out. How we don't like this person, what I could do to them. Somebody better hold me back. Mm -hmm. Now our thoughts are different. Our thoughts are, I want my family saved. I, I, I want my neighbor saved. I, I thank him for the sun that comes up. I thank him that last night I laid down and, and you held me in your bosom. Softly woke me up this morning with brand new mercy. Our thoughts have changed. Our heart has changed. Even our body. We dress our body different. We're in sin. We had a chest all hanging out because we thought that's what's going to attract the man. And I look at some of these um, people, especially on TV, um, that dress provocatively. And they still don't have a man. Amen? Because most men don't want everybody else seeing their goods. Mm -hmm. So we dress our bodies different. 
We find out what colors look good on us and, and what shapes our body the best. Amen. We wear different hairstyles. We've calmed down our makeup. I mean, the transformation is there. Once you get in Christ, you want to please him. And the Bible tells us how to dress as becoming holiness. Amen. We have the gift of worship. And, and, and the word tells us we can only worship him through spirit and truth. The truth is his word. The spirit is the Holy Ghost. And when the connection is there. Somebody said, just when I think about the goodness of the Lord, when I read his word, if I'm going through and I read the word of how he brought them out, how he delivered them, how he healed them, amen, I can go into full-blown worship, amen. It is the gift, we are given the gift of salvation through his blood. I love it, I love it. Mm -hmm. Most times when we buy gifts, we, we go through our credit card or cash. Mm -hmm. But he gave us the gift of salvation through the blood. And the blood still works. Sometimes if we, if we max out that credit card, it ain't working. You can swipe all you want and it's not working. If you use cash and you use... And you um, did uh, spend all your cash. It ain't working. But the blood, it works. Whether you're on the mountaintop, whether you're down in the valley, the blood, it still works. Amen. Then there's the gift of companionship. He said, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen. That connection, that companionship, to know that I can lean on him. I can depend on him. There's a song that says he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. Yeah, glory. Then there's this, the gift of diversity. This is what I love. Because when we have children, we don't buy all of them the same gift because they're individuals and they want something different. Well, it's the same natural, it's the same in the spirit. So here he said, I've got gifts of diversity. There are some apostles, there are some prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. There's the helps ministry that nobody talks about. But if we didn't have the helps ministry, if we didn't have the ushers, if we didn't have the people that carry our, someone will be, um, oh, what is it? When they carry your Bible and give you water and give you a handkerchief. If, if we didn't have that, there would be a crippling within, within the body of Christ. Then there's the, the diversity of People have words of wisdom. The Bible talks about the elderly, that they, that they have the wisdom. The young people, because they're strong, but we, but we need both. He didn't leave anyone out. Whether Jew or Gentile, they won. Young and old, you need to be one. Because we can get the job done together. Then there's a word of knowledge. There are great theologians. There are people who have studied. And I, don't, don't, don't be envious. Don't be jealous. Learn from them. Read the material. Listen. It will help you in this walk. Amen. It will help you to rightly divide the word. Then he said, all these gifts, whatever one you have, one isn't greater than the other. He said, all gifts is by the same spirit, his spirit. So when he gives the gift, they're, 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 they're all pretty much in the same package. Why? Because it's by his spirit. So let's wrap this up. It's time now for me, almost the end of my session. 1 Timothy 4, 14a says this. Do not neglect your gift. 
whether you're in the helps ministry, whether you've been um, labeled as an apostle, a pastor, an evangelist, don't neglect your gift. Don't despise your gift. If this is what God has given you, then you do all that you can, I can, we can, to make the gift the best. So be the best apostle. Be the best pastor. Be the best evangelist. Amen. Don't neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy. Amen. Don't neglect it. Because something that he gives us is so precious. The Son is precious. The Holy Ghost is precious. The gifts are precious. Life is precious. Amen. He said, now it's an abundance to us. There is one Lord. Don't get it. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. By which these gifts, the gift has been given to us one God and Father of all who is above all that's found in Ephesians 4 5 and 6 so our Father loves us amen and we can take the gifts individually that he's given us and when we unite oh we can move mountains Amen. We can set the world on fire. He, Jesus, the gift, was faithful in the past, faithful in the future he is going to be, and he is faithful today. That's why they call him the present. I, I pray that this has richly blessed you. Um, please enjoy this season because it is more than just um, the earthly gifts that we get, which are wonderful. I, I don't take anything away from that. I like getting gifts too. But the greatest gift of all was the gift that came and laid in that manger that was wrapped in those swaddling clothes that the angels sang about and the shepherds went and saw. He's no longer the baby in the manger. He's no longer on the cross or in the tomb. But now he sits next to his father. Amen. And he watches what the, the gift that we give, that he came down here for, he can now sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. Amen. So give the gift of Christ this year. From me and my babe, Deacon John, um, Maurice Jenkins, we wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It'll be a couple weeks before we come back, before I come back again. Um, because the next two Mondays um, are Christmas and New Year's Day. And we want you to celebrate. And I will see you on the second Monday in January. Love you with the love of Christ. Continue to pray for me and my family as I pray for yours. And um, don't forget... Uh, if you um, miss this live, you can always go. If somebody doesn't have Facebook, they can always go out on YouTube and view this live. God bless you until we meet again.